All right, let's do a simple overclock. So we'll get into BIOS by hitting the delete key. Uh, this is the uh, Gigabyte uh, BIOS layout uh, interface. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, what you have to do is uh, just a couple of basic changes. One is uh, CPU frequency and another one is voltage. And some of the more advanced uh, changes will be related to memory and some additional voltages. So let's go over the simple ones first. So advanced frequency uh, settings, you go into that. And I normally set the, the uh, CPU clock control to 100 just so that it's locked in. There's no changes there. Uh, but the most important one is the CPU clock ratio. And in this, I've found, I've tested uh, uh, quite a few chips now and they all do 4.2 gigahertz. So I'm just going to uh, uh, select 42 times 100 is 4200 megahertz or 4.2 gigahertz. We're going to leave um, uh, memory and everything at auto uh, at this point. Uh, there are additional functions here under advanced CPU core settings. You could uh, disable these, like disable the first uh, uh, four if you want, uh, but you can also leave it at auto, it's fine. Uh, memory will leave out for now. So we'll set the CPU VCO at 1.4. Um, I've been doing it with all the, all the chips and that seems to be pretty, you know, kind of a go-to voltage. And the other thing you have to do is change your load line calibration. Load line will control the uh, voltage fluctuation. So what you want to do is, don't go extreme, uh, set it to turbo. Turbo is uh, going to give you roughly what you're setting in BIOS in Windows. So that's what you want to do. Now, uh, while we're on the screen, CPU VDD18 is a voltage that I've found helps with uh, higher frequency overclock stabili stabilizing. So sometimes you'll get freezes and things in Windows. If you put this one up to, to 2.1, uh, you're going to uh, stabilize a lot of your overclocks. So I would advise you from the get-go to um, uh, actually do that. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, um, if you want, you can force Gen 3. I mean, it's, it's when it's on order, it should be on Gen 3, but let's just force it uh, and save exit. Uh, let's go to Windows and um, see if it's overclock has actually stuck and then we can run a te quick test uh, uh, in this instance so what I normally do is I use a, a program called CPU Z to check uh, whether I've managed to get the right overclock CBZ, it should read 4200 now. Uh, if I right click on it, I'll see all the cores, all the cores are running in 4.2 gigahertz. I've got eight cores, 16 threads. It's the Ryzen 7 2700X. I'm running it on the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard, and we are stock memory at the moment. So 1066 CAS 15 uh, graphics card is a Gigabyte 1080 Ti. We are going to run Firestrike, and then after that, we're going to um, play with memory as well so I can show how that works. The test has completed, as you can see. Um, I will let's go uh, through some of the uh, uh, details and the graphs here. So this shows uh, some of the frames and whatnot. We're not interested in that. We're interested in temperature. Temperature is cool. So GPU temperature, CPU below. So CPU in, in GPU tests, uh, as in graphics tests, was quite cool. You can see between about 40 to 47, 47, yeah. And then a CPU obviously shot up and you can see about maybe 62 or so peak. Uh, yeah, about 62. So between 50 and 62 
in CPU test um, and obviously the frequency is 4.2 gigahertz um, I've like I said I've tested Prime 95 in this uh, lots of things the CPU is uh, stable at this speed let's go to BIOS and do some memory and clocking change as well. some memory settings uh, memory will help you overclock your or, or increase the speed of your system and your performance um, now first thing you can try is uh, enable him XMP and then save and exit and see if this does anything and if it if, if the memory overclocks and whatnot now in my case I'm using some Corsair memory that was rated for Intel for 3200 and when I enable XMP on this memory I get uh, a memory error postcode uh, reboots three times and then goes back into BIOS it's not stable so what I've found as a workaround was instead of th three uh, 3200 I basically just ran it uh, at uh, 3000 and uh, one thing that I always you know I know this is a more advanced uh, uh, setup now but if you feel like doing a little you know tinkering a little bit more and getting a little bit more performance out of your memory uh, this is the way to go so this particular memory is, is has uh, 16 so 16 18 18 36 54 timings uh, I've played around with it a little bit and I've, I've, I've run it at CAS 14 and actually quite time, tight uh, timings. I've left the rest on auto, it didn't do a lot. You could maybe uh, play around with TRFC at some point and drop it down a little bit. Uh, make, you can also uh, make sure that your um, uh, command rate is uh, 1T um, and uh, the rest just leave it auto. Um, because XMP is enabled, XMP will actually give instructions for to BIOS to what voltage to set uh, to memory and whatnot. So you don't have to actually uh, address any of the voltage or anything. So essentially, when you're overclocking memory, the first step is simply just to go into the, the main screen, so advanced frequency settings, and just uh, switch to profile one. If that doesn't work, it's stable. You can clear CMOS. You can reset BIOS will also OCPL and reset back to BIOS. So you can just do that, go back to BIOS and then maybe try dropping the memory multiplier uh, and then later if you feel inclined you can, like I said, you can go to advanced memory settings and play with memory time and set your manual and see if that works out. Cool, the test is finished and as you'll notice as well, the score increased too from about 21,500 to about 21,900 uh, and that is specifically related to us uh, changing memory settings. So we've increased memory frequency from 1066 megahertz to 1500 megahertz, which is DDR3000 and uh, we've also reduced the latency. So we have went from 16 CAS 16, 18, 18, 36, 54, 1T to CAS 14, 15, 15, 36. So those tighter timings just allow memory to calculate uh, things much faster, but the, the memory frequency also is directly linked to Northridge frequency in, in um, AMD CPU. So you are in fact gaining an additional speed boost and that is also part of the reason why there is a uh, increase in performance. Das ist so crazy, crazy. All right, guys. So our sixth and final CPUs in the system. We've tested all six, and uh, I'm happy to report that 
Uh, they're all really good overclockers, and hilariously enough, the last CPU is actually the best out of a lot of them. This one pushed 4.4 gigahertz, and more significantly, we've been able to also run memory height 3,000 uh, megahertz, and uh, our latency is CAS 14, which is uh, lower than what this kit uh, is uh, produced for. And uh, we are obviously running on the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. The Corsair kit that we're using is a 16 gig kit. Uh, it's a 3200 rated for Intel. We made it work on uh, on uh, uh, AMD with tighter timings and pre uh, you know reasonable speeds. Let's do one more uh, Fire Strike Extreme for you guys. I've done a whole bunch of them now, and uh, they've worked quite well. I found a trick with uh, improved stability at higher clocks, where occasionally I would see some freezing. Uh, where in BIOS there is a voltage called VPP18. Uh, default vo voltage is 1.8. I've bumped it up to 2.1. It's a standby voltage uh, for the CPU, and you know when you are pushing um, the CPU higher, you're increasing that uh, signal, and it just helps stabilize at really high clocks and high memory clocks as well. So let's do one final 3D Mark Fire Strike, see what score we get, and um, we'll wrap it up with that. All right, here we go. I've had results for anywhere from 22.2 to 22.7 here. Obviously, a huge uh, boost in performance, uh, a stable system as well. Uh, I hope you guys have fun overclocking your systems. Please subscribe and share the video. Ask any questions. I'll try and answer them and help you out if you get stuck uh, with your overclocks. And uh, peace out. Check your body, check your body, check your body. Hey.